Hello everyone, you're welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at angle of deviation of a plane mirror. Now, based on my research, I noticed that many questions in JAM nowadays are mixture of calculations and also some mixture of what theory. But the problem there is that the reason why many students still get it wrong in JAM is we don't know that JAM is doing repetition of question so most of their questions now are being what's repeated so that's why i came today to explain the repetition the question that has been what's repeated often and often in different topic in physics so i'll be starting this class with the question that is found under angle of deviation of a plane mirror and how do you solve them how do we understand this with just only a little slight explanation i'm going to what's finish up everything now let's get started if you are new to my channel don't forget to click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and also like the video and share with your friends thank you let's get started now the first thing is that when we talk about angle of deviation now what is the angle of deviation of the play mirror let me show you something in just an easy way i think if i have a play mirror like this now there is a law which is known as the law of reflection in a play mirror let me say a mirror it must be what's shaded one side must be coated. Now, a ray that is coming directly from a source to a mirror is known as an incident ray. Now, a ray that is leaving a mirror is known as what? a reflected ray. Now, we have a reflected ray. Now, there is a law which is known as the law of reflection. It said the angle of incidence, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That is number one. Number two, it said the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal to the surface all lies on the same plane. That is the law of reflection. Now, what do you now understand by the word deviation? I'm going to be showing you some kind of thing in case they use this word for you in jump. Now, normally the ray of light is moving along this direction. This is the direction of the ray of the light. It is going like this. Now, the reason why this thing uh, reflected backward like this is because the ray was unable to pass through this coated surface. Why? This coated surface indicates that this surface is an opaque, is opaque in nature. And one thing is that what an opaque material does not allow the passage of light ray through it. So that is the function of this thing here. Now, if we assume that it simply shows that what the ray is meant to go like this, but due to this opaque nature, then the ray has been deviated at an angle. This is the deviation, this is the angle of deviation. Look at from here, we have the angle between here and here is known as the angle of deviation. This is my angle of deviation. Now, how do we not get so the ray has been deviated away from its what initial angle, which is what sorry? The angle is meant to, the ray is meant to go like this. So due to this, it has deviated from this. It deviated. So the angle from here between the reflected ray and this little dot here is what we call angle of deviation. This is the angle of deviation. Now, how do we now calculate for this angle of deviation? That is number one. Now, number two, under this thing that is always said often and often under this topic is angle of glance. Angle of glance. Now, what do you mean by angle of glance? Angle of glance is the angle between the surface and the incident tree. The angle between the surface, the reflected the, uh, the surface and the incident tree. This is the incident tree. This is the surface. The angle from year to year is known as angle of glance angle of glance now it is easier for you to calculate the angle of glance why because the angle the, the normal this is the normal sorry this is normal to the surface normal to the surface the normal is always at 90 degree so the from year to year is angle 90 degree so all this place is angle 90 degree it's even shown that for me to get my angle of glance you know the angle between the normal and the incident ring is known as the incident angle angle of incidence Angle between the normal and the reflected ray is known as the angle of reflected reflection. Now, so we can easily find the angle of glance, which will be equal to my if my angle of glance, sorry, the incident ray plus the angle of glance, let's take it as theta, must be equal to 90 degree. Simply means the angle of this is the angle of glance, this is the incident ray. So addition of the incident ray plus the angle of glance, or addition of the reflected ray. Plus the angle of glance will also give rise to 90 degrees. Why is it like that? It is because according to the law of reflection, 
angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the two are equal. Simply means if I is 20 degree, R may also be what 20 degree. So I can use angle of reflection or we can use angle of incidence to calculate our what? angle of glance. So my angle of glance should be equal to 90 minus angle of incidence or 90 minus angle of reflection. That is my angle of glance. But how do we want to calculate our deviation, angle of deviation? Now, to get our angle of deviation, it is quite easy. Don't forget I said the angle of deviation is the angle from year to year, which is angle between the reflected ray and the deviated ray. This is what the, the, the angle between the reflected ray and the incident. That's our called angle of deviation, which is angle in this place here, because this is the normal incident ray. So the angle between year and year is the what angle of deviation. Now, sometimes you can ask that what is the angle that is formed between the incident and the reflected ray? It's still the same thing. Now, how do we now calculate this? Angle of deviation, angle of deviation D is always equal to if this is a straight line, normally this is a straight line, total angle on a straight line is equal to 180. But we can check here, we know that from year to year is angle of incidence, from year to year is angle of reflection, and from year to year is angle of deviation. That means to get the angle of, I mean, it means simply you know, angle of deviation plus angle of incidence plus angle of reflection, everything equals to 180 degree. Now, since the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, so if we put them my equal, I can easily say angle of deviation plus angle of incidence plus, I can change this up to I, everything equals 180 degree. Then what will my angle of deviation? Angle of deviation D should be equal to 180 minus 2I. Why is it 2I? I plus I is 2I. Then take it out about 1 minus ti. Now we are going to be using these two formula. Angle of deviation is 180 degree minus 2 times angle of incidence or 2 times angle of reflection because I said angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. And also the angle of glance, which is theta, angle of glance theta is always equal to what 90 minus angle of incidence or 90 minus angle of reflection. Now let's now jump to the question of what today. Now what well, my question for today? I have this as my question. Okay, now let's start. Question one. The question one states: It said a ray of light is incident on a plane mirror such that the angle of reflection is twenty-five degree. Angle of reflection R is equal to twenty-five degree. Now they said: What is the angle of deviation of the ray after reflection from the mirror? What is the angle of deviation D of the ray after reflection from the mirror? Do you need to do you need you don't need to draw the diagram out since we know that what deviation simply means when the ray is the incident the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray. So angle of deviation of the mirror is equal to we've been given the reflected ray as 25 degree. And don't forget I say angle of deviation can be equal to 180 degree minus 2i or 180 degree minus what 2i because R and I are equal. So what will I get? I'll be having 180 degree minus 2 multiplied by my R is 25, which is 180 degree minus 50. Now 180 degree minus 50 should give rise to 130 degree. That is my angle of deviation. So option A, we have 25 degree. Option B, we have 50 degree. Option C, we have 65 degree. Option D, we have 115 degree, and option E, we have 130 degree. So that is my angle of deviation. Now, question one is done. Let's take a look at question two. What is the question two all about? They said the angle of incidence of a ray of light on a plane mirror is 55 degree. Now, I need to draw a diagram for this. They said the angle of incidence of a ray of light, because if you don't draw a diagram, you might get it wrong. I said the angle of incidence of a ray of light on a plane mirror is 55 degrees. Now, as when I have a plane mirror, this is my plane mirror. Now, the angle of incidence, don't forget I said the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. So, the angle of incidence is 55 degrees. That's 55 degrees. Now, then I said, determine the angle between the reflected ray and the mirror. The angle between the reflected ray and the mirror. This is the mirror. This is the mirror, yeah? This is the mirror, yeah? Now, if this is the reflected ray, don't forget that there is something. This is the reflected ray. Don't forget that the incident ray, I, must be equal to the reflected ray, R. 
So I can have here also to be what 55 degree. But that is not the question they are asking. They said the angle between the reflected ray and the mirror. This is the reflected ray. This is the mirror. The angle between the reflected ray and the mirror, or the angle between the incident ray and the mirror, we call them angle of glance. So this is the angle of glance. So angle of glance, don't forget I said angle of glance, if you place here is 90 degree. So the angle should be equal to 90, um, angle of glance should be equal to 90 minus 55 degree. Now, 90 minus 55, why? Because my 55 degrees are, which is the reflected ray. So I'll just have 90 minus 55 degree. What will I have for this? I should be having 35 degree. I should be having 35 degree. That is the angle of glance. Option A, we have 35 degree. Option B, we have 45 degree. Option C, we have 50 de 55 degree. And option D, we have 110 degree. This is the second question that I know that what it is always often repeated in jump. When I repeat this question, it is easier for you to answer by just calculating what they want. Now, question three. You know, I said I'm going to be giving you five questions. Please take note of what this. Four of the questions, I'm going to be solving it myself. Then the last fifth question, I'll drop it as a what question. If you know the answer, you can just drop the answer to me in the comment box section. Solve it and drop the answer to me in the comment box section. Now, question three, we said, a ray of light strikes a plane mirror at a, at a glancing angle of 55 degree. Now, I love the way they ex ask this. The Bible explains to you that what? At a glancing angle. When they say that that glancing angle, they are not referring to angle of incidence. They said, a ray of light strikes a plane mirror at a glancing angle of 55 degree. Now, we are going to draw this kind of question. The first thing is for you to draw the plane mirror. You can just do it on the mask college. It's not because nobody will check your book. Now, you know this is my incident ray. This is my reflected ray. This is your normal. Now, they said a ray of light strikes a plane mirror at a glancing angle. Where is a glancing angle? This is what we call glancing angle. Angle of glance. At a glancing angle of 55 degrees. That is what they gave to us. Glancing angle. Since that this is my incident ray, this is my reflected ray. Now, they said. Calculate the angle between the incident and the reflected ray. Angle between the incident and the reflected ray. Now, where is the incident? Where is the reflected ray? Now, don't forget that angle between the incident and the reflected ray simply means angle of deviation. Angle of deviation. Now, we can get it in two ways. How do we get it? Don't forget that um, the glancing angle, you no, know, my glass angle at this um, the angle of incident. This here is I. Here is equals to R. The first thing is that here from here to here is 90 degree, which is the angle which this angle, uh, angle of the oh, sorry angle of glance plus the angle of incidence must be equal to 90 degree according to what we've been doing. So it simply means I plus 55 degree equals 90 degree. I can easily get I to be equal to what 90 minus 55 degree. 90 minus 55 degree should give rise to 35 degree. That is what we get. That is 35 degree. Now, don't forget that according to the law of reflection, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, which is equal to 35 degree. That means my R will also be equal to 35 degree. Now, let's say what is the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray? Now, angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray, I can calculate it in different ways. And what are the ways that we can use to calculate this? First of all, calculate. Um, you can. This is sorry. So I'm between the incident ray and the reflected ray. This is the incident and the reflected ray. Okay, let me try to check the options for you. Now, this is the incident ray. Angle from year to year is the incident ray. Angle from year to year is the reflected ray. So the angle between both of them should be equal to addition of what you have here, I plus R, which is equal to my I is 35 degree plus my R is also what 35 degree. Which is equals to 35 plus 35, I'll be having 70 degree. So the angle between the incident ray, which is from year to year, and the reflected ray must be equal to 70 degree. In the option, we have option A, 35, option B, we have 55 degree, option C, we have 70 degree, and option D, 110 degree, and option E, we have 140 degree. So the answer to that is option what? C. Now let's take a look at the fourth question. Which I'm going to be using as my last question here before I give you the one that I'm going to solve for me. Now, the first question is said, a ray of light 
incident on a plane mirror is inclined to the mirror at an angle of 50 degrees. A ray of light incident on a plane mirror. Look up. A ray of light incident on a plane mirror. This is the ray of light. It is incident on a plane mirror. Is inclined. Sorry, is inclined to the mirror at an angle of 50 degrees. This is another way of asking question of glance. Now, here they didn't make mention of what the angle of glance is 50 degrees. They just said it's inclined to the mirror. Please take note. There is one between the incident angle of incident. They said okay, area of light is incident at an angle of 90 degrees to the normal. That is angle of incident. But here they said area of light incident at an angle of 50 degrees. Sorry, area of light incident on the plane mirror is inclined to the mirror at an angle of 50 degrees. They are referring to the angle of glance. You know this is my normal. This is reflected ray. This is the angle of glance, which is 50 degrees. So the angle of glance is 50 degrees. That's what they are referring to. Now the next thing they said, what is the angle of deviation of the mirror of the ray? What is the angle of deviation? How do we calculate for the angle of deviation of the ray? Now don't forget I said if you have gotten this, for me to get the angle of deviation, I'm going to draw it out. The, uh, the ray is coming like this. Angle of deviation is the angle between the year and the year. Now, how do we get the angle between the reflected and this one that is coming here? So, this is what we call angle of deviation. Don't forget that this is a straight line. But before I get this out, I need to do some kind of mathematics. Since angle between here, this is the glance angle, I can get my angle of incidence I. And I can get my angle of reflection, but I know the angle of incidence. So what my angle of incidence? My angle of incidence I should be equal to what? 90 degree minus 50 degree. So 90 minus 50 are all about 40 degree. Now if I is 40 degree, then it will be equal to R, it will also be equal to 40 degree. So the angle of incidence, according to law of reflection, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Here will be 40 degree. And also here will also be what? 40 degree. Now, this is, lies on a straight line. If it lies on a straight line, don't forget that we've got an angle of, so angle of deviation D should also be equal to what? 180 minus 2 times either I or 2 times R. Let's just do 2 times R. Since that from here to here is R. So since I is equal to R, so angle of deviation can be 180 minus 2 times reflected ray or 2 times incident ray. See that they are equal. So 180 minus 2 multiplied by what is my reflected ray? 40 degree. I'll be having 180 minus 80 degree. So the, the angle of deviation will be equal to 100 degree. That is my angle of deviation. So the angle of deviation is different between angle between the incident and the what. So this is the angle of deviation here. The angle at which the what? The ray deviated away from the normal parts. I get what you know. So that is my angle of deviation, which is 100 degree. If you take a look at the options, option A, we have 50 degree. Option B, we have 80 degree. Option C, we have, um, okay, I think 35 degree. And option D, we have 100 degree. I think I've been able to explain well on this. So if you have any challenge on this, you can drop anything you don't understand. Just drop the comment for me in the what, comment box section. Now, let me give you this as a takeaway that you can solve for me. Drop your answer in the comment below. Now, the question goes thus. A reflected ray of light makes an angle of 27 degrees with the surface of a plane mirror. What is the angle of incidence of the ray? If you know the answer, drop it in the comment box section for me. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.